What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you about Unity style map feature. This feature was introduced in Unity 2017.2. In this tutorial, I'll be using an art assets pack made by Glowing Dude. The download link to these assets will be in the description down below and if you want to learn how to make these assets, Glowing Dude has done an excellent series on this. The link to his series will be at the end of the video. That being said, let's begin. We're going to start by creating a tile map. Right click in the hierarchy, click 2D object, tile map. This is going to create two game objects for us, grid and tile map. You'll notice that tile map is a child of the grid game object. So what is the difference between a grid and a tile map? In simple terms, a tile map stores sprites and the grid determines the layout of a tile map. Because this tile map is a child of this grid game object, this grid determines the layout of this tile map. A little later, we'll take a look at grids and tile maps in detail. Rename the tile map game object to my tile map 01. And now let's paint some tiles. Click window, tile palette. This is gonna bring up the tile palette window for us. Make this window a little big. So what is a palette? A palette basically holds tiles in it. When you wanna paint tiles onto a tile map, you have to select the tiles from a palette and then using the currently selected brush, you can paint those tiles onto a tile map. In this tutorial, we'll only be using the default brush, which is this brush right here. But in a later tutorial, we're going to take a look at different types of custom brushes and custom tiles. Now you'll notice there's a message here saying create a new palette in the drop down above. So let's create a palette. Click create new palette, enter a name, my palette 01. Grid is currently set to rectangle and we can leave it at rectangle. That's because that's the only option that we actually have. This option basically determines the conversion of cell space to local space and vice versa. At the moment, we don't need to go into detail with this. And as I mentioned before, this is the only option that we have. So we're just going to leave it as it is. And finally, we have cell size. Here you have two options. You can set it to automatic, in which case the cell size will be determined based on the tiles that you store in the palette. Or you can set it to manual, in which case you get to specify a fixed cell size. So we're going to set it to manual and set the size to one on X, one on Y, and zero on Z. Hit create, and then we need to choose where to save this palette. Create a new folder called palettes, enter the folder and click select folder. So now my palette 01 has been saved in the palettes folder. And now you can also see my palette 01 in this palettes list. Now my palette 01 is the current palette in use, but we don't really have any tiles in it. So let's try adding some tiles. You can see a message over here saying drag tile, sprite or sprite texture assets here. So there's a couple of ways that you can place tiles into a palette. Let's take a look at them. First, navigate to the sprites folder and create a sprite. Right click, click create, sprites, square. Name the sprite background color sprite then create a tiles folder right click click create folder tiles and within the tiles folder we're going to create a tile asset so right click click create tile as you can see a save dialog box has popped up it's asking us to save the tile asset enter a name for it call it bg color tile 01 make sure it's being saved in the tiles folder and then hit save so our tile asset has been created here as you can see there are three fields in the tile asset sprite which sets the sprite for the tile color which adds a tint to the sprite and collider type which determines the type of collider we'll take a look at collider type a little bit later set background color sprite as the sprite for our tile and you can leave the color at white our tile is now ready so drag and drop this tile into the palette as you can see we now have a grid shown here and our tile is on this grid basically meaning this tile is in the palette so this is the first method of creating and adding a tile to a palette the second method is you navigate to the sprites folder and drag and drop the sprite into the palette this is going to bring up a generate new tile window basically all you have to do is select the folder in which you want to save the tile and then enter a name for the tile we are going to call this bg color tile 02 and hit save and now if you navigate to the tiles folder you'll notice that our second tile has been created and its sprite has already been set now just so we can distinguish this tile from the other one change the color of the second tile to cyan so this is another method that you can use to create and add a new tile to the palette and for the final method navigate to the sprites folder and we're going to use the three sprites in this sprite sheet first of all we need to split them up into individual sprites set the sprite mode to multiple hit apply then open up the sprite editor do an automatic slice then hit apply again and now we have individual sprites so rather than creating a tile out of every single sprite we can drag the entire sprite sheet into the palette and then this window shows up this window is basically asking us to select a folder which in our case is going to be tiles 
and this is going to be the folder in which three new tiles are going to get created. Hit select folder and as you can see the tiles have been created. If you head over to the tiles folder you should see our newly created tiles over here as well. Now as you can see here these sprites seem to be a little too big to fit into the cells so we're going to fix that by changing the sprite sheets pixels per unit value. It's currently set to 100. Change it to 260. Hit apply and that should solve the problem. So these are the three methods that you can use to add tiles into a tile palette. Now you can do much more than just drag and drop tiles into the tile palette. You can actually edit the tile palette as well and that's what we're going to do now using these tools right here. These are the tile painting tools. First dock this window near the scene view and then maximize it using either shift space or using this drop down. So first some basic navigation to pan around the tile palette, either right mouse click, middle mouse click or alt and left mouse click. And you can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. Now let's edit this palette. Hit the edit button. This puts the palette in edit mode, meaning you can do things like paint new tiles onto it, move tiles around, erase tiles and so on. As I mentioned before, we're going to be using the tile painting tools to edit this palette. So I'm also going to be explaining the tile painting tools as we go along. We're going to start with the paint tool. That is this tool right here. If it's not already selected, click this button or hit the B key. Now just a quick note, at any time you can disable the currently selected tool by clicking its button or pressing its keyboard shortcut. Alright, so this tool uses the active brush, which in our case is the default brush, to paint the currently selected tiles onto the tile map. However, currently there are no tiles selected, which is why you see this empty white square wherever I move my cursor. So if we try to paint something, nothing happens. Now this is where the picker tool comes in. The picker tool is used to pick tiles from a tile map to paint with. A small side note, palettes contain tile maps as well. That's the reason we are able to place tiles in the palette to begin with. Click the picker tool button right here to enable it and then select the cyan colored tile by left clicking it. Now you'll notice a couple of things have happened over here. First of all, we are not using the picker tool anymore. The paint tool has automatically been selected. And second, this white square is not empty anymore because we have selected a tile. Now that we have selected a tile, left click and move your mouse around to start painting tiles. Another easier way to use the picker tool to select tiles to paint with is to hover over the tile you want to paint with, hold down control and left click. Now, as you can see, the white tile is selected. So if I try to paint, I'm painting white tiles onto the tile map. To make the selection empty, just control click in any of the empty cells. You can select multiple tiles with the picker tool as well. Just control click and drag to select multiple tiles. And now you can paint the exact pattern that you selected. A quick side note, you'll know that you are selecting tiles because this white square that you see will turn cyan when you try to select something. Okay, so now that we have a couple of tiles on the tile map, let's try erasing some tiles. This is where the erase tool comes in. Now before I select the erase tool, I want you to pay attention to the shape of my current selection. This is what my selection currently looks like. So I'm going to enable the erase tool by clicking this button. And now when I left click and move my mouse around, if I go over any cells that have tiles within them, those tiles get removed. So it basically erases them. Now if you're currently using the paint tool and want to erase stuff, just hold down shift and left click and drag. So instead of painting tiles, you are erasing tiles. And of course, if you're not satisfied with the current selection, you can always make your selection bigger or smaller. All right, so control click this spike tile here and draw a couple of spikes in a straight line. Now you'll notice that all the spikes are pointing in the upwards direction. However, you can use the square brackets to rotate your selection. So now you can make the spike point right, down, left or up. So now real quick, I'm gonna draw something and I'm gonna speed up the footage to save time. All right, so now we have this sort of shape created over here. Let's say we wanna fill this tile into this space. Painting every single cell is gonna be time consuming. This is where the fill tool comes in. The fill tool lets you fill an area with the currently selected tile. To enable the fill tool, either click this button right here or hit G on your keyboard. When you enable the fill tool, depending on where your mouse cursor is, you're gonna see different results. This is because the fill tool is showing us what it would look like if that entire area was filled with whatever tile is currently selected. So currently, my mouse cursor is in here, so you can see this is the result. If I bring it out here, now you can see this result. So if I bring my mouse cursor in here and left click, now this entire area has been filled with the selected tile. And this is exactly what we are looking for. Disable the fill tool. Now we've used the fill tool to fill an entire area with a bunch of tiles. Control click on an empty cell and then hit G and then move the cursor into this area and hold down shift and left click. All the tiles within the area have been erased. Next, let's take a look at the rectangle tool. The rectangle 
tool draws a rectangle shape on the tile map and fills it with the currently selected tile. So it's really simple. Select this tile right here and to enable the rectangle tool, either click this button or hit U on your keyboard and then click and drag. And just like with the paint tool, even with the rectangle tool, it can be used to erase stuff. Hold down shift and then click and drag and you are now erasing tiles instead of drawing tiles. The rectangle tool can also be very useful if you want to draw a straight line like this. All right, real quick, let's fill this area up again. And now let's take a look at the select and move tool. The select tool is used to select an area of tiles to be inspected. Click this button or hit S on your keyboard to enable the select tool. Enabling the select tool lets you make a grid selection. A grid selection is a selection of one or more cells on a grid. When you make a grid selection, you'll be able to see detail of that grid selection in the inspector. So real quick, let's come out of maximize just so we can see the inspector and now using the select tool select one of these cells so first of all I want to point out that you know which area has been selected because there's an orange box around it so first we have position this shows us where on the grid the selection has been made so if I select another cell you'll see the position changes next you have size this shows you the size of the selection basically giving you an idea of how many cells have been selected currently only one cell is selected so you can see the size is one on X one on Y and one on Z if I select multiple cells now you you can see it's 6 on X and 3 on Y. So those are the base details given by a grid selection. This grid selection also gives us details about which tile is in this cell, the color of the tile, and the position, rotation, and scale of the tile. Keep in mind this is a position, rotation, and scale relative to the cell, which is why you see the position 0. If you change the position, you'll see the tile moving, but that doesn't mean that the tile is now part of another cell. It's sort of an offset. Additionally, the grid selection also gives us details about the sprite and the collider type. All right, Right, next let's talk about the move tool. The move tool is used to move a selected area of tiles to another position. So let's say we have selected this group of six cells. To enable the move tool, either click this button or hit M on your keyboard. With the move tool enabled, click and drag the selected area to move the tiles. What you're actually moving is the grid selection. So when I move the grid selection from here to let's say here, now these cells are within the grid selection. Okay, so far these have just been empty cells. Let's try moving this grid selection into this area. So so now these cells are within the grid selection and as you can see these cells have tiles in them. So now if I move this grid selection from here to here, the tiles get removed from these cells and move along with the grid selection and get dropped into the cells that are currently within the grid selection. Now keep in mind the grid selection does contain a couple of tiles. Let's try moving the grid selection into an area that already has tiles. What happens is the tiles of the cells within the grid selection get replaced with the new tiles. It's important to understand that the new tiles aren't being layered onto the previous tiles. They are actually replacing the previous tiles in the cells. So that's about it with the select and move tool. And now you know how to use the painting tools. Now that we are done editing our palette, we can disable edit mode by clicking the edit button again. Once we are out of edit mode, you'll notice that we cannot make any more changes to the palette. To save the changes made to the palette, save your scene. All right, so to avoid making the video really long, I wanna divide this into multiple parts. So I'm gonna stop this video right here and I'll continue in part two. I hope this video was helpful. If you wanna check out the next video in this series, the link should be up on the screen right now. If you wanna learn how Glowing Dude made the art assets, the link to his series should be up on the screen right now as well. I'm also excited accepting donations so if you want to help me out my paypal email address is up on the screen and in the description down below don't forget to like share and subscribe leave your comments below and i'll see you guys next time